McGee and Molly Show. NBC and Richard Hutnut, makers of enriched cream shampoo and cream rinse, present Fibber McGee and Molly Transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. and Molly in just a moment. Even though the big guns of a shooting war are silent today, another war, a vicious and bitter war, continues. It is the cold war of propaganda versus truth that is raging throughout the world. The people immediately concerned are the 70 million inhabitants of the Iron Curtain countries. But don't think for a minute that every American has a stake in its outcome, too. You can help to combat the vicious lies that are being spread throughout Europe by joining in the Crusade for Freedom which offers each of us as individuals the opportunity to strike a blow against tyranny. This blow can be struck through Radio Free Europe, an independent citizen-sponsored organization which broadcasts the message of democracy through the Iron Curtain every day, hour after hour. It brings hope and truth to enslaved peoples, spiking lies and undermining the influence of red rulers. Radio Free Europe is a partnership of Americans and exiles of enslaved countries who broadcast to their compatriots in their own idiom. Join the crusade by contributing your truth dollar... Send your contribution to Crusade for Freedom, care of your local postmaster. Hey, Molly, I was just listening to the newscast on the radio. Anything good happen? No, but the chief of police has just issued a warning to all housewives. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Some guy's going around from door to door offering to fix vacuum cleaners and toasters and appliances and stuff. It's a racket. A racket? One of the oldest. You see, what the guy does... He tinkers with your vacuum or your toaster a while, and then he says, This is a bigger job than I thought, lady. I'll have to take this down to my fix-it shop. Well? Well, you don't even have a fix-it shop. Oh. He just loads the stuff in a big truck and takes it to some other town and pedals it. Well, that isn't honest. It's a good thing the chief of police got wind of it. They'll catch this guy, but it just goes to show how careful you women have got to be. I should say so. Oh, how did the chief find out about it? It seems that when he came home for dinner last night, he found his wife sweeping the rug and making toast in the oven. So he took her down to headquarters for questioning. She made a full report. Oh, that poor girl. What a lecture she must have listened to. Sure. I'm glad it wasn't me. (laughs) Oh, I can just hear my lord and master now. How could you be so stupid, Molly? Let a total stranger come in here and... Please, please, kiddo. This ain't funny. This is serious. That's not the only racket being worked on housewives these days. You take the old envelope swindle, for instance. Every day, some woman... The what, Swindle? The the envelope Swindle. Grocery boy! There's the old timer with the groceries. You go talk to him a minute. I'll go get an envelope and show you what I mean. Okay, dearie. Just put them there on the sink, Mr. Old Timer. Already done it, daughter. Hey, it sure is a beautiful day outside. Makes me feel like an 80-year-old kid again. (laughs) (laughs) You sound pretty chipper, all right. Had me a big morning, daughter. Just made $30,000. $30,000? Just beat Teeny a game of Monopoly. (laughs) For a while there, it looked like I was going to have to tear up the tracks to get that last railroad away from her, but hello there, Johnny. I was just telling daughter here. Hey, look, old timer, I bet it's going to rain today. I bet it's going to rain in the next ten seconds. Well, that's a cheerful greeting, son. Prettiest day of the year, and you come along I bet you three bucks it rains. How about three bucks? Daughter, you better get the boy to bed and take his temperature. Sun shining, there ain't a cloud in the sky. The envelope swindle, Molly. Now watch this. Oh, I wondered what you were trying to do. What are you two whispering about? You ain't fixing to go outside and turn a hose on the window, daughter, because oh, I... Oh, no, no, I'm staying right here. Come on, you want to bet? Three bucks. Three bucks says it rains in the next ten seconds. Well, there's something funny going on here, but... Well, okay, here's my three dollars. It's a bet. Here's my three bucks. Now put the money here in this envelope and we'll seal it up. Okay. That's it. Good. Now I'll put the envelope in my pocket. Just a minute, Johnny. If you don't mind, I'd feel better if daughter here held the envelope. Nothing personal, of course. I just don't trust you, that's all. Okay, here, Molly. You hold the envelope. Now we'll count up to ten seconds. And if it don't rain, I win the money. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it ain't raining, Johnny. I win. Don't tell me there's a fine drizzle I can't see no, because... No, you're right. It didn't rain. You in the dough. Well, get in the envelope, Molly. Thanks a lot, Johnny. This I don't get, McGee. You just gave away three perfectly good dollars. You'll see in a minute. i got to be getting back now, so thanks. Why don't you open the envelope first and take out the money? Oh, good idea. <laughs> I could get ahead of it, Hey, there ain't no money in here. There isn't? No, there ain't. Just a bunch of cut-up old newspaper clippers. <laughs> you see, 
money there, Molly? Here's the envelope with the money in it. When I stuck it in my pocket, I switched them. Two envelopes. Oh, so that's the swindle, huh? Right. You ought to be careful, old-timer. You see, if I wasn't honest, I'd let you walk out of here with them clippings instead of your money, see? No, not me, son. Nobody'd ever trick me with an old gag like that. Well, I just done it. Here's your money. Right alongside of mine, right here in this original envelope. Whoa! What's the matter? This other envelope. It's full of Monopoly money. Where's my three dollars? Right here, Johnny. Pound in my hand. <laughs> what? A bet, a bet, son. I want it fair and square. So long, kid. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, come back here, old timer. Hey, that ain't fair, old timer. Hey, give me my three bucks. Hey, wait a minute. in a minute. Hello, I'm your Richard Hudnot beauty advisor. Here's exciting beauty news for you busy women. It's about an amazing shampoo that gives your hair a beautiful egg sheen in just three minutes' time. This remarkable beautifier is called Richard Hudnot Enriched Cream Shampoo. It's made with real eggs, powdered in a wonderful cleansing formula that sudses right up even in hardest water. Every drop of this golden lotion cream shampoo is enriched with egg protein. And since hair itself is protein, it naturally benefits from this affinity of protein to protein. It's nature's own way to put a beautiful sheen in your hair. You'll love the way your hair gleams smooth and shiny as bridal satin. And ladies, nobody's too busy to take a minute more for Richard Hudnut Cream Rinse. It seals in that fine glimmer and gleam, protects it with a fragrant beauty finish. Take my advice and try this quick two-step way to truly beautiful hair. Richard Hudnut Enriched Cream Shampoo and Richard Hudnut Cream Rinse. Well, that's the last time I ever use the old timer for a demonstration on how to swindle people. I'll be with him all the way down here in that dead red truck, and then he won't drive me home. Three bucks back, though. Hey, McGee, you want a lift? Oh, hi, Doc. Boy, I sure do. Hop in. Where you been? Grocery store. The old timer tried to run off with my three bucks after I showed him the envelope switch when I bet him it was going to rain. It didn't because I was teaching Molly a lesson on how to watch out for swindlers. I got it back, though. Would you mind playing that backwards? Maybe it'll make more sense that way. Why don't you listen, flap ears? I was telling Molly about this vacuum cleaner racket that's going on around town. Oh, yeah, I read about it. You mean where they pick it up to fix it and skip with it? Didn't happen to Molly, I hope. No, I put her wife to that jip, all right. But there's a lot of other swindles going on, and I'm trying to educate the kids. That's what I was demonstrating with the old timer, you know, the envelope switch. Well, that's the one where you make a bet with a stranger and both of you put your money in an envelope and the third party holds it? Yeah. And when you win and open the envelope, it's full of old newspaper clippings and the slick stranger who switched the envelopes is gone? Hey, hey, how did you know that one? Don't you remember? What? I was the third party the day you met that stranger on the bus last summer. Oh. Well, that's why I'm warning Molly. If it could happen to a guy as sophisticated as me, just think what an easy mark a trusting girl like Molly could be. Yeah, if she trusts you, she'll trust anybody. Yeah. Helpless housewives have to be protected from swindlers like that, and by George, I'm home. Well, thanks for the lift, Doc. Anytime, McGee. Oh, Doc, before you go, hmm? about that deal on the bus. Don't worry, I won't mention it to Molly. Don't forget, ten of that twenty you gave that man was mine. Gee, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, fellow suckers. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll meet you next month at the Pigeons Convention. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, it's a good thing Doc was in that thing with me. Molly ever found out about that. Now, it's me, kiddo. I got my three bucks back from the old timer. Hey, what's this big package here on the table, Molly? Oh, hello, McGee. I didn't hear you come in. What's this package? Well, that's for Sally Nelson next door. The delivery boy said she wasn't home. And it was COD. And you paid for it. That's right. How'd you know? How did I know? Oh, Molly, that's the oldest swindle of all of them. The what? How much was this thing? Fourteen eighty. Oh. I don't know what's in it, but well, I... I'll tell you what's in it. A bunch of old newspapers, that's what's in oh, it. Oh, McGee, don't be silly. I can understand you looking out for swindles, but this thing is getting a little ridiculous. Ridiculous, huh? Well, we'll... What are you doing? McGee, stop that. That isn't for us. You're tearing the package. You're darn right. Now, take a look inside. Heavenly days. Nothing. Just full of old newspapers. Oh. Now, maybe you'll believe me when I say to be on the lookout for swindlers. Oh, brother, $14.80. Down the drain. Oh, dear, what a chomper. 
I feel terrible about this. Well, I'm, maybe I'm being a little harsh with you, but gee whiz. I know, and here I was just thinking how silly that woman was who gave the man her toaster and vacuum cleaner. Well, we all make mistakes, and the way to remember them is to pay for them. This just cost you fourteen eighty, so maybe you learned your lesson. It certainly was an expensive one. Will you split it with me? No, ma'am. I'm not being chintzy or anything, but just as a lesson, so you'll remember to be more careful. You're right. I made the mistake, so I'll pay for it. Well, I guess it isn't too bad. Could have been $50 or something like that. Thanks, dearie. You're so understanding. Yeah. Well, I'll take these old papers out back and burn them, and we'll never mention this again. Except for a little lecture I'm going to give you when I get back. It's time you learned a few things about being alert and on your toes. Oh, huh? Molly, how could you be so stupid? I sure walked into that one with my neck sticking out. Come in. That's that same man. You better watch out because I'm... I'm sorry to trouble you, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hello, Sally. Come in. You see, I've been out all day, and I... I know. I wish you'd have been home a while ago. You could have saved me fourteen eighty. Fourteen eighty? On that phony COD package the man delivered. Oh, then it did come. Is that how much it was? Fourteen eighty? I beg your pardon? Well, the old Civil War newspapers. You see, my dad's birthday's coming up, and he collects stamps and old newspapers. When I saw these old papers in the hobby shop, I knew that'd be just what he wanted. Uh, so I well, thought... I don't have the incident. Just went up in smoke, Molly. We can forget all about it. Uh, What's the matter, kiddo? Oh, hi, Sally. Did Molly tell you about that silly thing she just did? <laughs> I don't blame her for looking so embarrassed. You see, this guy comes to the door and he tells you he's going to... Tibber and Molly will be right back. Every time you turn on your radio receiver, you're looking for entertainment, news, or relaxation. And you'll find all three right here at the NBC spot on your dial. Tomorrow night is packed with action-filled entertainment. Frank Sinatra stars as Rocky Fortune, a young man with a penchant for trouble. It seems that every time Rocky Fortune accepts a new job, somebody gets murdered, and the blame is laid at his feet. You'll enjoy the light touches that run throughout every episode of Rocky Fortune, so make a date to listen tomorrow. And be sure to tune to NBC tomorrow for Barry Craig, starring William Gargan in the role of this two-fisted confidential investigator. There's always a fast-paced story waiting you on the Barry Craig series, so listen tomorrow. Then for true stories of your police force in action here, Dragnet. From crime to punishment, Dragnet takes you step by step on the side of the law in the solution of an actual case from the files of the Los Angeles Police Department. Jack Webb stars as Sergeant Joe Friday with Ben Alexander as Frank Smith. Don't miss Dragnet tomorrow on the NBC Radio Network. Girl Scouts are celebrating their anniversary. Yeah? The 42nd birthday of the Girl Scouts of the USA. 42nd birthday? My gosh, think of that. I wouldn't take any of them kids to be over 10 or 12 years old. Oh, no, McGee. The organization is 42 years old. I knew that I was making a deal. <laughs> Since 1912, the Girl Scouts have played a big part in building one of the greatest resources the nation has, our young American womanhood. Right. And Molly and I would like to join millions of other appreciative Americans in wishing the Girl Scouts a happy birthday. Good night. Good night, all. NBC and Richard Hutnut, makers of enriched cream shampoo and cream rinse, have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed. With Bill Thompson as the old timer, Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Gamble, and Mary Lou Harrington as Sally Nelson. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night when big business enters the lives of Fibber McGee and Molly. Youth Wants to Know with guest Eugene Lyons on the NBC Radio Network.